Bonjour. My name is Glenna Henderson. I'm from Seguin First Nation in Manitoba, and my mother is from uh, Papikasi's First Nation down in Fort Capel area. Uh, I was asked by Saskatoon Public Schools to do a little bit of storytelling and or tra traditional knowledge sharing, and so here I am and going to share a couple of recipes with you today. Uh, one of them is Bannock, and that's what we're going to start off today. And the second one is a morel mushroom and wild rice soup. Um, the reason why I chose these two uh, things is because soup and bannock are pretty regular to most homes, and a lot of people in Saskatchewan will also know those terms. Uh, bannock is a bread, and it was brought about 150 to 175 years ago with uh, rations and portion controls and it came in with uh, people coming from other countries. So when the visitors came, we were introduced to a lot of different things, milk flowers and sugar, um, you know, processed sugars that came down from the uh, different parts of the world, but specifically into uh, the islands off of North America. And so a lot of the things that we do use in this process are, have been found or are, are now grown locally here in um, Canada and the US and or what I like to refer to as Turtle Island. So um, I have some ingredients made up and everything is ready to go so I can concentrate on speaking and talking to you about some of the uh, things that I have been taught and some of the things that I learned through school and other methods online uh, training and things like that so again uh, my name is Glenn Henderson and I, I live here in Saskatoon so uh, Bannock has been a part of my life uh, since I was a very young girl and uh, as I became a teenager, I became more and more interested in cooking as the years went on, uh, mostly because I didn't like doing dishes. So it was the best way for me to get out of doing dishes was to be part of the cooking team uh, in a very large family. <laughs> so um, I'm going to start off with, like I said, with the bannock. And what you need to begin is three uh, cups of flour and this recipe I'm giving to you will serve uh, three to five people depending on how much uh, uh, and then you can double it or triple uh, the recipe as needed for your family so I'm going to put about three cups inside this bowl here and what I've done is uh, so you need flour baking powder sugar salt uh, butter or a different kind of oil if you're going to make a baked uh, bannock you can use uh, canola oil uh, olive oil if you cook on a lower heat heat setting and a little bit longer time than I'm going to instruct with you today and so uh, in this cup I put uh, two tablespoons of baking powder two tablespoons of sugar and one tablespoon of salt and I'm going to mix that in with the three cups of uh, flour here for you. And what we do is we mix all the dry ingredients and uh, that helps, you know, distribute the taste and the, uh, the uh, baking powder, which helps, makes, helps make the bannock rise. And so um, for, for my recipe, you need about half a cup of oil. Um, and again, like I said, you can use canola oil, you can use uh, lard, you can use baking grease. Um, you can also use any kind of animal fat that you might be uh, hunting with. And I'm just gonna melt this here on the stove. So I, uh, I like to use butter. Uh, it just gives that extra little bit of a zing for taste. Uh, there's, um, you know, there's a little bit of milk and stuff and products and salt and different things in there. So if you, if you have a diet that's uh, restrictive of salt, you can eliminate it from the uh, dry mix here and use butter or just put a sprinkle on. But uh, salt won't change too much the, the, uh, the, uh, 
the finished product of your bannock. So, um, you know, like I talked a little bit and this was something that came with uh, the visitors and or settlers that are now here in Canada and part of our country. And so what uh, they, they had scones or, you know, different kinds of things that the Scottish brought along. And, and I know that there was breads and tortillas and different things that were produced further south from here. Um, but uh, Bannock came, became a, a part of our uh, society in the last 150 plus years. And in doing that, it's, uh, it's, a, it's become a comfort food. It's become part of something that's uh, really close and it reminds us of our grandmothers, our parents, our mothers, you know, uh, family gatherings and, you know, just something to always go, you know, and it, it's, uh, it's so good when it comes right out of the oven, you know, you can, you can let it cool off and cut it with a knife or you can just rip off a piece <laughs> right in the middle of, uh, right when it comes out and be careful because it's going to be hot. Um, I've set my stove, stove to 450 degrees and I like to cook mine at a high, higher heat and shorter period of time between 17 and 20 minutes. And so I'm going, the butter is just about ready here. So I use butter and milk if you don't uh, have cream you can use full water uh, again I like the flavor I like the texture that milk gives and, or cream and I just like to use up what I have because I don't like it to go bad and we don't use a lot of this but over Christmas we sure go through the cream so I've had had quite a, a big box here you need about two and a half cups of liquid so now we have the oil milk and cream I mean cream and water inside here and that I'm gonna mix it all up and then I'm gonna set this aside so it's gonna look a little more wet than uh, can be just put directly in the oven some people do actually make biscuits out of this and biscuits will be a little bit more crumbly uh, because of the texture or the wetness but if you want a bread an actual bread then you're gonna have to add more flour because I only use three cups roughly and you can go up to probably add another two to this once it's done uh, settling in and the thing about uh, flour um, use is that you do need to let gluten um, once it's wet the flour will start getting a little more stretchier and softer and so that's the reason why um, we let our our breads rest. Not everybody does. Some people, you know, you don't have time and you throw it in the oven and it works out fine and that's your recipe. Uh, but for this one, I always uh, have my bannock um, rest for at least 20 minutes up to overnight. And sometimes it's I put it in an airtight bag or container and it can last up to two days. And so it, it for, for use because uh, sometimes I have, you know, like when I used to have a restaurant and or when I do caterings and there's uh, large numbers of people that I need to pre-make stuff that I can. So I've already, um, this is how it looks. It's like I said, it's going to be a little bit wet. Um, you know, if you had a little bit more flour in there, we could make just like buttermilk biscuits or like the ones that you see like bisquick or something like that but uh and it's pretty close in recipe for that but again we're gonna make some dough out of this shortly so i'm gonna put this aside and uh start dealing with our uh our soup so welcome back um i've started prepping to get our soup going and i want to introduce you to uh, the morel. Um, morel mushrooms, they grow wild pretty much all over the world. And uh, what uh, they come out after a fire and they can grow again and again after years once the, uh, the, the forest and things start growing back. Um, they have, they're very, uh, have a high um, antioxidants and they're 
supposed to be really good for people who have cancer. Uh, they help with your immune system. They have vitamin D, uh, iron, uh, calcium. So things that uh, we need in the winter. So these I've dried. They, they were pan picked here in Saskatchewan and uh, they're, they're quite tall and they feel real gummy when they're fresh and now that I've I've dried them and reconstituted them in water they've kind of got that rubbery little feeling left so they feel really neat um, they're, they're, uh, this color is pretty much exactly what you're looking for out in the forest and uh, or in the grounds and very good very good for you you know like have lots of minerals magnesium and things like that potassium so and so what what you want them to uh, they're going we're gonna chop them up here and put them in the soup right away but I'm gonna start uh, my uh, soup off with uh, water and wild rice and so I have about six cups of wild of water here and I'm gonna just put that in the pan in the soup pot and then uh, Here's some wild rice. This is picked in La Ronge up north in Saskatchewan. And uh, I'm just going to throw this in here. About so half a cup you need. And uh, we're going to bring it to a boil and let it cook for about 25 minutes while we're talking here. So I'm going to get that going. And. Now, for soup, I always really enjoy uh, carrots and onions and celery. Today I'm out of celery, so I'm actually going to use some jalapeno peppers that are in the fridge. And again, when you're making any kind of soups, you can add the things that you enjoy and the stuff that you have at home. We, uh, I, I always learned that, you know, adding vegetables get, not only gives the water flavor, but it also adds uh, additional vitamins and, and minerals and things that we need to uh, feed our bodies and that's the that's what the purpose of food is is to to get these vitamins and extract them and or put them inside of us and and then you know we get those health benefits so I always like adding things to uh, to my soup so I'm going to brown these up a little bit um, just to help with the process and uh, let's see Let that warm up a little bit. I'm going to put a little bit of butter. One of the other best things in life. And I'm going to also add a little bit of olive oil. Just so um, between the two of them they won't burn um, while cooking. So um, the other things that I'm going to use is spices. <laughs> and I'm actually going to add... Um, I, sometimes I have stock at home uh, right now after the holidays and things like that you think I'd have a lot but we made soup and different things for for others and took it with us places so I don't have much stock left here for that so I'm going to add a little bit of chicken bouillon to the water and the wild rice while it cooks and so that should uh, help boost the flavors and uh, give us a little bit of uh, salt the salt of the earth in there. So I'm um, going to wait for that butter to melt. Now, uh, well, it's getting warm. So I'm going to put the carrots in there. I'm going to put some onion. And you know, like for soups, I would just dice vegetables. I, uh, I sliced up the carrots and, and the onions and uh, would usually have some celery. So I use three carrots and half a onion, medium sized onion. Um, you know, you can you can use sweet onions. Uh, you can also use, uh, you know, regular cooking onions, which I'm using today. And, uh, or anything that you might have, even green onions would be helpful uh, for this. Uh, I'm also gonna throw in a couple of bay leaves. Uh, bay leaves also have their own uh, 
properties for helping with illnesses and medicine and, and medicinal properties. So I always like to use that in my soup because uh, everybody always feels a little bit of uh, um, uh, comfort, I guess, in, in, in providing soup, especially on cold days. And, and so I, I like to give that added um, property to, to the foods. Also for this recipe, we're going to have thyme, uh, salt and pepper. Uh, I like to grind mine. And then I'm going to use parsley and chives to give it some color, but also a light extra flavoring, uh, but closer to the end of when they are being prepared. So I'm going to grab a uh, cutting board and let some of this stuff cook, and I'll be right back. Back here. So I pre-mixed some uh, flour and let it rest for about 45 minutes before we started the show. And uh, so now I am going to mix this up and add a couple of th couple more cups of flour. Again, if you're like me and you've made bannock, you know, thousands of times and you don't actually measure every ingredient you should but also even when you were uh, making recipes that add flour additional flour is don't add it all at the same time you know go go in batches so I put about a cup in here and the reason for that is uh, you don't want to add too much flour that it's uh, going to uh, harden your dough and so you know like right now my dough, it, you want it to get to the point where it's not too sticky, but also not wet because you want it to cook nicely and all the way through and you want the flour to be evenly distributed. So I've added a cup and a half in here. The dough is very, very pliable. It, it, you, you can look at it and you can see that it's, uh, I'm going to put it over here, that it uh, takes its shape back really quickly. And so... You know, you want you want your bannock to be soft like that because it also ensures that your your uh, your bread is soft in the end. You know, if it feels heavy, if it's if it's hard when you when you put it in the oven, then you're probably um, either not giving it enough time or you've added too much flour. And so, what I'm doing now is just making sure it's I get a nice little thing here I just turned it out onto here and I didn't pre-flour or put anything on top of the um, the pan it's just a dry pan there is oil and butter inside here but because there's a, it's a dough it's going to just seal itself uh, with the heat under here so we won't have to put anything else in there so I'm going to put this in the oven because while the wild rice is cooking partially cooked now we're going to chop up those mushrooms and put them inside there. And the reason you want to poke holes in the bannock is to just get rid of any air bubbles that might be uh, inside there or might develop, you know, and then you'll have a lopsided bannock. So there it is. I'll give you a close up here. This is going to go again into an oven at 450 for anywhere between 17 and 22 minutes, depending on how thick. And so if you look at mine, the thickness is only about half an inch. You want to put that on the bottom rack. You can move it after 18 minutes if it's not fully cooked all the way through. Um, you'll know it's cooked by the browning and the weight. So it seems to soften and so, you know, like lift it up. Uh, take a look. I'm going to set the timer for 17 minutes. Give my veggies a store. I put six cups of water, uh, three bay leaves, and a little over half a cup to three quarter cups of wild rice. Um, you know, and you can use a little more or a little less depending on what your tastes are and how much you're making. Uh, the recipes will all be at the back, the back end of the video as well. So, coming back to our morels, um, 
I just wanted to give you an idea, you know, like I, ha I have, uh, this was about three handfuls or a little, about close to two cups of morels. And I'm just going to chop them loosely uh, into pieces and stuff. But they're very expensive. Um, you know, the this this amount right here would probably cost at the store at retail between $25 and $35. Um, you know, there was about two ounces of mushrooms and I reconstituted them in some water, which I'm going to add to the soup. So that's why I only made six cups right now. And so I'm going to add these uh, morels now and that the, uh, the wild rice has been cooking. So as you can see, they have, they have a little life of their own here. And, uh, but, uh, you know, beautiful, beautiful uh, taste is going to be coming here. So I'm going to add the, the water because we want to keep all those nutrients. Remember, we dried them out. And so what was inside this bowl was iron and, you know, the phosphates and different things that actually are inside uh, the mushroom. They, it comes out when you add the water. So um, when you make additions, I was taught as a, as a cook that every time you add something to, you should be salting or peppering or adding, um, you know, your spices. So with the mushrooms, I'm going to add about a tablespoon of thyme right now. I'm going to put the rest of these vegetables in here before I burn them. And so there goes our nicely browned, flavorful added butter. And they're softened so they're easier to, um, they're partially cooked already so that we can, uh, um, it's easier for the soup to, to, uh, to cook. That makes it faster. Carrots and stuff like that take a long time to cook, so I always uh, try and brown them. And they also add some color, even though the morels themselves have uh, have given us some beautiful color uh, from the water. So our soup is almost prepared. It's just got to simmer for a little while, and our bannock is going to take about another ten minutes. So. Um, Welcome back, welcome back. Bonjour. Welcome to my kitchen again. We're just waiting for this rice to cook. It's almost there, but we're gonna take out this bannock because that is definitely ready. See, there we go. It was about 19 minutes today. To, to get that complete um, and again you know it's beautiful you want to kind of hear a hollow sound from it uh, you know that then you'll know it's cooked for sure it's hard to tell but it springs there's no real and it has a, <clears throat> again a hollow sound I have a I have a cookie rack or a, a cooling rack and so that's normally what I'll use uh, for for baking and stuff like that. One of the major things that we lost since colonization and since uh, you know since settlers came and in, in, into the areas is our our ability to forage uh, and hunt and uh, prepare foods that our bodies were used to. And I think that that has been uh, one of the major downfalls to our, you know, the indigenous people here in, in on Turtle Island, uh, throughout Canada and the United States, the uh, diabetes is uh, rampant, you know, it's very, very high numbers. Nutrition and, and First Nations people, we, we, we are taking back our knowledge, we're, you know, listening and remembering and, you know, like it's, to me, it's beautiful to take the stories and the things that I remember doing with my uh, Musham and Cookham who were very, very um, uh, knowledgeable in the traditional uh, food processes and the lands around, uh, you know, Lake Winnipeg. Uh, my grandfather, our Musham, was the uh, con conservation officer 
from the province of Manitoba in the area for 35 years. So he knew all, where everything was, where things grew, you know, and we all, we, my grandma and grandpa always had food and supplies and things. And, you know, we, we lived on, on, on the mouth of the river, which is what Seguin means, at what my first nation is called. And we would go down at the embankment to the water and we had white sandy beaches and we could fish and there was sturgeon and walleye and pike and you know like things like that and if you if you went and sought out around the areas and stuff like that you'd find many other different kinds of fish but my I, I remember I have a distinct memory of, of my grandmother taking the caviar from sturgeon and you know to, in, in saving that and putting it in so that we could uh, she would sell it uh, to, in the city, you know, and, and it's a very expensive uh, delicacy, you know, like even now it's about $125 an ounce, uh, which is a very small amount, um, you know, maybe the bottom of this cup of salt. And so, you know, like things like that were, were very, uh, you know, gave them the opportunity to take care of their children and put money aside. Some of my relatives, including my father, went to residential school. I, I was fortunate to not, you know, not be in that situation. So um, there's a lot of things, you know, that came with being raised by people who went in there. But uh, again, the, the time is now for healing. And, you know, that's why I take it upon myself to learn about the foods and try and remember and ask my aunts and uncles and talk to them about, you know, like what, uh, what kind of other things that I might be missing in the area and things like that. So it's, you know, when, when we talk about elders and how important they are to us, it's because, you know, they're kind of the last link to, to, for, uh, past generations that they did things with and, and knowledge was given to them and so we want to hold on to that and write it down or do whatever we have to do like this kind of teaching and, and to ensure that you know our our knowledge keepers and our traditions and things like that will be passed on you know to the next generations to come so I'm gonna check on the soup and I'll be right back now you can thicken this with a roux if you like you could add cream different things like that if you like to Mushroom soup is sometimes served as a cream, but I'm just gonna give you a shot of that. And up close. Very hot. Let's see, look at all those morels nicely chopped up inside there. So there's our soup. Again, we have this. I'm gonna add a little bit of chives on top because the color you know, contrasts of color always give, uh, you know, your eyes uh, a taste of the food before your stomach gets it. And uh, so I'm gonna add a little bit of pepper, freshly ground. I don't think it needs any more salt. Um, just wanna give it a taste here, make sure. Oh no, that's perfect perfectly light flavors. I'm going to move that aside and I'm going to cut our bannock here. So again, you know, bannock was made, was brought to us as one of the traditional foods of, uh, you know, the settlers who came to Canada in the 1800s. And it's something that, you know, is enjoyed uh, from coast to coast in different ways and bread of course is is something that's uh, used all across the world and as both a comfort food and a filler for uh, or, or a great addition to any meal and so here again I've made I'm going to give you a close-up shot here but there's our bannock soup and bannock So I appreciate you all taking some time to hear what I have to say about um, food and, and food sovereignty, you know, issues about um, why, why we talk about needing to um, ha be able to, you know, explore the traditions and explore the lands and, and make sure that the traditional territories are kept safe is because 
these kinds of things. This is our, this is who we are. This is Canadian food. You know, yes, we have new things that have been added, you know, and we appreciate it and we love it just as much as everybody else. But we also have things here in on Turtle Island that are uh, very rich in nutrients, very, um, you know, our bodies are crying out for them. And I, and I implore, you know, you who, uh, who garden, who are explorers and foragers and, you know, um, teachers that you would take some of this stuff, the, the ingredients that I, that I use today and, and show your students and your friends and your family what really is, um, Indigenous Foods of Canada. And miigwech, thank you, uh, Saskatoon Public Libraries for giving me the opportunity to share my story. Again, this is Glenna Henderson coming to you from Treaty 6. Uh, have a good night.